Hello there, Ray here. We got a brand new snapshot today. This is snapshot 22W42A. And in it, we get all the brand new things that we've seen in the Minecraft Live. Camels, bamboo, hanging signs, and the redstone chiseled bookshelves. Also, there's tons of new changes on how this whole new snapshot thing works. Let's check out what's all new with further more detailed videos in the future. So make sure you guys are subscribed with that bell notification turned on so you don't miss those. But we can't actually get the new features just by opening up a new world. What we need to do is create a new world, then go into data packs, and then add in the new 1.20 data pack. We can also add in the bundle one. Once added, we can hit done. It'll warn us about how these features could cause crashes. Then when we click create world, it'll also warn us that this world might not work in future versions. Now if we type in camels, we can see we actually get the new camel eggs. Let's go ahead and give these a try. Oh my goodness. Let's turn our hitbox at three plus B and wow. These camels are massive. Looks like they're about two and a half blocks tall. They're quite large. And if we go ahead and go into survival, we can just right click them with a the saddle and apply it and we can hop onto them. They do hold two players. We can use our WASDA keys to move the camels all about. The camels inventory doesn't have anything but the saddle. And instead of like having the jump feature that the horses have, they now have a bar that we can use very similar, but it's gonna be a dash. So if we hold down space and then release it, once it gets really high, you see the camel will dash forward. And you can actually find camels naturally inside of desert villages. Now there is a cooldown for the dash. Notice after I do it, the bar goes blank. And then after a few seconds, we get the different increments once again. You can walk as well as run with a camel. And the dash can be used to hop across water. Now the sprinting doesn't work very well when it goes uphill. And using it will use up stamina. Camels will also sit down on their own. And notice that their hitbox actually gets smaller when they're sitting down. Now they can sit down at any point. So while you're riding them, they said they are a bit stubborn in order to get back up. But if you kind of move your keys around, they will start moving once again. And camels will follow you if you're holding cactus. You can give two different camels cactus and this will put them in love mode and they'll produce baby camels, oh my goodness. And you can of course make these guys grow up using the food. So make sure you build my cactus farm here in order to get tons of food so you're ready to breed these camels up. Camels do have a unique ability of actually being able to walk over fences like they're a normal block, which I have to say for someone who's actually worked with camels in real life, they don't actually normally walk over average size fences. And it's really cool that hostile mobs cannot reach you when you're on top of the camel, but you could still hit them. If there's anything you want me to test to do with the camels, let me know as right after this video goes live, we'll be testing out all of these new features on my testing server. You can learn all about that on my Discord and I will be live live streaming on Twitch, so make sure you hop on over there and follow me. As well as you guys can actually join the testing server and play along with me. We also got the brand new bamboo planks and these can be crafted up by putting four bamboo into the crafting grid and you'll get one plank out of it. That means it's gonna take a lot of bamboo in order to get all the different variations to do a decent amount of building. So make sure you guys build my bamboo farm and collect tons of it before the 1.20 update. Now with the blocks, you could then build all the different types of bamboo things, just as you would like with other planks. And there is a lot of different variations with the blocks, the stairs, we got fences. I really love the looks of these. There's the doors. We also got signs, trap doors, and even the rafts, which look amazing, but they act just like normal boats do, and even having ability to place chest on them. Now there is also these mosaic blocks, which are crafted a bit differently. To get them, you need to first make bamboo slabs, and then put two of them vertically, and this will produce one bamboo mosaic. And with those, you can also craft stairs as well as slabs for more variation. But with this update, we also get the new hanging signs and the hanging signs look amazing. Here I got every single variation lined up so you guys can see all the different types. Now you might notice the hanging signs look a lot smoother than the normal signs, which still have like the plank look on them. That's because when it comes to crafting them, you actually have to strip the logs before crafting them. I have this great little device here which will help you automatically strip tons of logs in preparation for the 1.20 update. You also need two chains, but with this you actually get six signs, which is different than the normal signs, which only produces three. Now when it comes to the bamboo, there is no stripped variation, so you just use the normal bamboo planks, but it will only give you two. Now hanging signs can be placed a couple of different ways. They can be placed on the side of a block, similar to like a bale, or they can be placed like underneath of a solid block or even on something that has a solid center like a fence here. But they will change the looks as the chains actually point towards the center. But the signs themselves work the same way where you can write in your messages. 
although they are more limited as you can only put eight characters per line. Where with a normal sign, you can go up to 15. But if you place the signs on the side of blocks, you can actually remove that block and they are now like a floating sign. This would be a great way to showcase something without being too cluttered. The signs themselves also have a collision on the little post part so you can actually walk on top of them. But when it comes to the actual writing part, you can walk right through it. Same for these over here. But these signs cannot be placed directly onto the ground like normal signs. Do you have any further questions about the bamboos or the hanging signs? Now speaking of wood, they actually came in and changed the sounds of different woods. With the normal ones, they sound like this. But the nether ones now sound like this. And bamboo ones have their own unique sound. This also applies when walking on top of them. Now another thing you can do with wood now is build the new chiseled bookshelves. This is six planks and three slabs. And this will produce one of them. And we place it down, it looks like this, which has some pretty cool textures on all sides. One side is the open shelf, and this is where you can place in books. Four different types of books that work on these, including normal books, enchanted books, book and quills, which are yet to have them being signed, or books that are signed, which are known as written books. All of them get placed in. They always get placed in from top left down to the bottom right. And they can hold a total of six of them. When you right click, they remove them in the same order. They also have a redstone function where they're able to read the amount of books which are inside of them. Notice as we put more in, the redstone signal gets higher. And when it's completely full, it's gonna be a power of six. If you look at the data within this block, you can see it actually remembers all the different types of books that are inside of it. This means it is a tile entity and can't be pushed in Java with distance. Hopefully they add more redstone functions so we can tell exactly what type of books are inside. And maybe even use this to sort out enchanted books. But currently you could use this as like a way to get into a secret entrance or hidden base. If you have any questions about the chiseled books or ideas, let me know in the comments. Now these aren't the only changes that came out with the Snapchat. You might have noticed that the creative menu is completely reworked with completely new tabs and organization. Look at one for building blocks, natural blocks, functional blocks, redstone blocks. Of course, they still got your, your saved hotbars as well as search items. And then down here, we got tools and utilities, combat, consumables, crafting, and spawn eggs. I actually really like this new setup because items can be in multiple tabs. So like in building blocks, you got your doors here, but if you go to the redstone blocks, you can also see we got doors. And I'm glad they removed the potion tab because a lot of things there belonged in other ones. The natural block tab is pretty cool because it contains pretty much all the stuff you can find naturally. And they did organize it how I always kind of wanted it, but they are still looking for feedback. So if you guys have anything you think could be slightly tweaked, let them know. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you have to toggle in the new features. This is done so that the developers can continue working on future versions while updating the current version. So they're changing the way that they're doing major and minor versions for the Java edition. And yes, the developers themselves actually call it 1.19.2 and not 1.19.2. So this update with the camels and everything is actually a snapshot for the upcoming 1.19 version. So they're going to continue to be fixing problems for the 1.19 versions while still allowing players to play the 1.20 versions as the optional toggle. And that was done with those data packs. They go into more detail on how this actually works with feature flags. So you can disable and enable experimental or unfinished features, such as like the camels. If you're curious how this all works, I'll link this down below. And they did other changes like how crafting recipes work with having different types of categories, such as like smelting, blasting, smoking, and campfire cooking, which happens to be something related to a supposed leak about 1.20, saying that they're gonna add in a new block for cooking down ores, which is going to be called the crucible. And along with this block, they would add a new item called slag. Apparently it would be only used for ores and it would look something like a cauldron. Now crucibles in real life are just a container that's very hard and, and doesn't normally melt. And then this container is placed over tons of heat and it will melt down any type of ores that are placed inside of it. And the slag is like the negative byproduct of smelting down the ores. This could just be a rumor as it does seem a bit odd that they would come out with such an item since you already do have blast furnace. Now some more changes in the snapshot include changes to the chat, where they remove the chat preview, change the way that messages show up if they were deleted, and how different tags will show up. They also change the way strongholds are placed into the game so that they're more efficient code-wise, and this will also make slight changes on where they appear. They're still going to be around consensual rings, but they might be off by a few degrees. They also did some changes to resource packs, coming out with version number 11. And they removed the fixer so some versions won't automatically adapt to the current version. We also have a new option to how fast this panorama spins in the 
menu screen, if we go accessibilities, we got this little slider here. If we change it to zero. We can see it just stays still. So if it gets kind of annoying, you can always come in here and change the speed. In this snapshot, they also all came in and fixed a ton of different bugs related to past things. So I'll quickly go over the more important ones. They fixed a bug where mobs would build up fall damage when they were on a lead. And then when they would touch the ground, they would get tons of damage. Rabbits will now always drop a piece of meat when they die. Players will no longer get pushed slightly when they convert farmland over into dirt. You can now hold down Q to drop tons of items very quickly while you're hovering over top of them. Control Q also works the same way, so you can easily clear out your inventory. Hostile mobs will no longer spawn on top of scaffolding, and they also won't spawn on top of chorus flowers. It's now possible to just right click saddles as well as like carpets onto stuff like horses, donkeys, and llamas. Villagers will no longer breed while they're not standing up such as like inside of beds. The trick I showed where you could have your player sleep and wake up directly inside of an end portal to be immediately teleported into end dimension no longer works. This would stop players from going into an infinite loop back into the end dimension. They fix it so cats will no longer get off their leads when they go into the gift collecting mode. Notice when they wake back up, all of a sudden they're just off of them. They fix pathfinding for mobs, so in some circumstances, the mob won't just happen to fall off when trying to get to their location. And they fix a pathfinding issue with axolotls trying to get to water and then end up taking a shortcut and then just falling off. And a similar issue to do with frogs. In some cases, watermelons would just spawn underwater. They resolved the issue where pressure plates weren't actually activating redstone despite the items touching them. So they fixed the problem where rabbits would constantly keep eating carrots despite them no longer being hungry. Shulkers will no longer sit lower in boats that have chests compared to ones that don't. Belays were also showing up too low whenever riding something. Alays will no longer try to get items on the other side of the world border. When getting the advancement birthday song, the player wasn't actually getting any XPs from it. Now when you give the lay a tipped arrow, it'll now know the difference between the different types. So if I would throw out a different type, you can see it won't pick it up. This means we can actually sort out the different types using a lays. Although this can already be done with hoppers. They fix a dupe that would occur when an item would get its NBT updated all the time. This was to do with a lays which would cause them to constantly dupe items. It's now possible to get a screaming goat when just breeding a screaming one with a normal one, there's a 50-50 chance that the baby will be screaming. Before when another portal would be placed in by the game in a snowy biome, it wouldn't be able to place it actually inside of the snow and instead would just place it up in the air. But now the portals are able to actually be placed and replace the snow layers to no longer have floating nether portals when coming over into a snowy biome. Now when it comes to the skull shriekers, after four warnings it summons a warden, but dying would typically cause this to reset to zero. This will no longer occur, so beware that even if you die, you can easily summon the warden once again. You will no longer get ghost blocks when doing any type of explosions and faraway coordinates on servers. Now come join my Twitch live stream server which is open to the viewers. You guys can join me in playing around with all these new features. With all the details on how to join the server on my Discord. It's going to be so much fun playing around with all these new things. And if you guys have any suggestions let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys over there. Bye bye.